Whoa, dice for dummies. You don't actually think there's only one way at getting better at miniature hobbying, do you? What about all the big YouTubers telling you you need to get better at sculpting, kit bashing, painting, building, freehanding, dry brushing, stippling, all these things? Surely there's more than one way, right? Well, there really is. There's only one hobby secret you need to know to become a better builder, sculptor, painter, learn how to put more effort into your models, and ultimately get more out of the models you paint in terms of skill, practice, and looks. And, well, it's going to be with this one secret. I know you may think it's stupid, I'm only coming with one, because there's tons of things you could go off, and ultimately, yes, you can get better with certain skills, but I believe that there's one secret hobby tip, trick, whatever you want to call it, is what is truly going to change the aspect and direction of how good you can become through your hobby experiences. So, let's get into it, shall we? Alright, boys, today I'm telling you my one hobby secret. My one tip and my one trick that's allowed me to build the army you see on screen here, consistently paint the models inside that army, all while still being in school, having my landscaping business, trying to upload consistent videos to this YouTube channel, and tons of other things that have been happening in my life, for example, like travel, all within an eight week period. And I want to show you how this was simply all done by adopting this one simple hobby secret that so many people who are trying to get into things like 40k, Necromana, um, Shatterpoint, Battle Mech, AOS, all these things are missing. So I don't want to waste any more of your time. I don't want to blabber on about how you should subscribe to my YouTube channel or how you need to buy my product or something stupid like that. I just want to show you this one simple secret so you can implement it as fast as you can and get your hobby journey, hobby progress, hobby anything rolling much faster. So without further ado, let's find out what the secret is, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, cue the drum roll. And the secret is... Yeah, yeah, it, it's like that simple. Probably expected something a lot more interesting than, well, this. Probably expected some kind of painting technique, specific building shops you should go to, or even a diet if you were thinking like that holistically, but it's not. It's simply the mindset of adopting the fact that you either love your army or building an army that you truly love. And I know this makes basically zero sense to people who haven't really thought of it before, so I'm going to give you an example of what it means to build an army that truly reflects your values, your kind of idea of what the army should look like, and building an army what truly means to you with an example of my army. So if you know before, I've made tens of videos on this before, but I have built my very own custom to hunt list. Basically, building a combination of the bad moons and the beast snaggers, combining the two opposite values to each other together to create whatever the heck I'm going to name my army. Basically, because I thought they were both super duper cool. I love the idea of the bad moons kind of flex, the idea that they are the most richest orcs in the galaxy. They pose the most threat. They've got all the guns, they've got all the daka. But I also love the beast snaggers, the tribal opinion and how we should revert back to the old ways and all that. So I want to combine the two, combine the squigs, combine the guns, combine the teeth and combine the snakes and have them together so that I create whatever the heck I've smashed together. And I can say with so much confidence that there was not a single time doing this or I was building my army and I was not excited. Researching, sculpting, buying, painting, basing, all even the boring stuff like the freaking gluing process and the planning phases and all that. I loved every moment of it because I enjoyed and reflected on my army through my own personal values. I believe that the way the orcs operate is with this kind of squig gun orientation. I love the guns and I love the squigs and combining those two factors made me love this army so much more and it made me want to pursue that army it made me want to go into that army it made me want to continue working on the army every day i was i was freaking like before school sometimes if i had nothing on no youtube no youtube stuff no landscaping stuff i would go on and start sculpting my models because i just enjoy doing it that much i wake up at like four or three o'clock to sculpt my models i'm not saying it's a flex or anything i was just doing that naturally because i loved my army 
Now, when you kind of juxtapose this to my old orc army, it perfectly ensembles the idea of having an army that reflects on you, an army that doesn't reflect on you. As my old orc army, I more or less was probably in the most situation of people, people watching my videos right now. I was just painting them, just kind of getting along, having an orc army, just, you know, no real values. Painting into my own scheme, of course, but a lot of it was just the basic orc models, the basic death dreads, the basic squeaker boys, the basic boys, knobs, war bosses, whatever you can think of. Just the basic version of what you would expect. Nothing special, nothing really aligned to me, just kind of there. And while yes, I still had fun, I can definitely say that I was less enthusiastic of painting, building, sculpting, planning, doing all that stuff to my old orc army than I am to my new beast snagger army, solely because my old orc army didn't reflect anything that I really had. It was more or less just the fact it was, well, there. It was the fact that, hey, they're just my army and I roll with them. And, well, I can wholly say that when you juxtapose those two stories, it is clear to see that when you put value over just having an army, you truly start to incorporate that more. And trust me, having all these techniques is not lovely. Having all these painting techniques, building techniques, knowing the best kind of way to hold your brushes, that's all fantastic, but it all crumbles unless you have the whole base of your army in the first place. If you think about it for a second, unless you're really, 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 really just doing this for money, then unless you have an army that you're like solely purposeful on, you're learning all these techniques, painting an army that you don't even think looks cool. So, how do you reckon you're going to do? How do you reckon the consistency is going to work? How do you reckon you're going to get through this? When you're tired, are you going to do it? You have a tournament coming up, are you going to paint them? Like, what's going on? You think you're going to play more games? Like, it's all just this stuff that incorporates the idea of, it's all nice to know all this cool hobby stuff, to know the cool paints, to know the cool, I don't know, brush techniques, to know how to build your models, what kind of gear to use, but like, it all crumbles unless you have this base of, I fundamentally love my army. And I can confidently say with myself that I do, and I think that my actions and progress solely reflect that. Now, you could say that yes, this process does take a bit longer. Buying the basic models is like that. And you could also say that because I'm running an orc army, it's a lot easier. Orcs have a lot more models, they have a lot more distinct clans, and it's a lot basic more simple than that. But the simple way I'm going to break this belief is by telling you that I have a friend who plays Grey Knights, and he made Treeman Grey Knights. Tree, he, he loved the idea of nature, so he wanted to incorporate that with his thing, and it's as simple as 3D printing. Now, I know that, yes, investment in that means, but once again, it comes back to the factor of if you love your army that much, you will go to lengths to find that kind of resources. I went to lengths to find my Savage Gazgol. I went to lengths to find and build my Savage, um, what, Savage Storm Boys. I went to lengths to kind of re-sculpt my knobs to be Savage Knobs, to be Savage Beast Bosses. I'm trying to look into finding Savage Mega Knobs, maybe going with the Ard Boys and using them and doing a few augmentations here and there with guns and stuff. But overall, you will go to great lengths to find them. If you truly love your army that much, you will go to great lengths. You will make time for them. I know you might say you don't have time, but like I said before, I was running a YouTube channel, landscaping, and trying to do really well in school as well, all while still building my army. So it's simple the factor of if you love your army, you'll find time. If you love your army, you'll find resources. And this comes back to my whole point again, is if your, if your base level is fine, then you are good. So I'm going to finish off this video here with a basic statement to this, is that the only way you're ever, ever, ever going to be a hobby expert, a hobby master, a hobby continuum, is by loving your army. And the best way to do that is by reflecting your values onto your army. If you're playing Death Guard, if you're playing Eldari, if you're playing a freaking different game, if you're playing Necromander, if you're playing AOS, if you're playing Battle Mech, and you don't like the way the, the mechs look, make them yours. What do you love? Do you love dogs? Do you love nature? Do you love the color purple? Do you like spots? Do you like windows? Do you like doors? Do you like motocross? Do you like soccer? Do you like rugby? What do you like? And incorporate it with your army. Because once you have your inner values, your inner beliefs, your inner things, you reflect that on your army, suddenly it becomes a reflection of you and not just a plastic kit you bring around with you. So, the best thing I can say to you is find what you love. 
I knew that I loved squigs, I loved guns, and I loved orcs. And when I combined all those three, man, I made a, I made my love for that. Now, obviously, it's a lot easier to do this inside the game. It's it's definitely a lot harder to find what mountain biking type death guard models. But like I said before, if you love your army, you will go to great lengths to make sure your army is complete. So learn your techniques, learn your brushstroke techniques, learn your army sculpting techniques, learn how to hold your models correctly, learn how to play better. But trust me, that will all crumble unless you build your base, unless you love your army to the core. And that's gonna be all me today. Hope you really enjoyed this video. Do all the YouTube stuff. I know it's, I know, I know. I'm asking so much, but come on. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, do all the cool YouTube stuff, and hope to catch you in the next one. Mwah.